Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today's show is sponsored by Kotex Camera and Lens Protector Shields. They kept my lens and camera safe and dry this past weekend on a trip to the lake where I decided to challenge myself to do landscape photography. Which I hate. I mean really. Where's the subject? Do you see a subject? There's stuff everywhere. Where's the subject? That's right kids, I got up at 4am in the morning to catch an awesome sunrise shot on the lake and returned with this. It doesn't stop there. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of shots, only two were in focus. Good times. Thanks, Kotex. You kept my gear safe and dry. Today's show is about bokeh, so let's take those sticks out of our bum, turn off that cable news hate, and learn something. Together. Who writes this sh Here, there. Oh, yeah. For those of you that don't know, bokeh is the blurring of the background in an image or video. Your subject will be sharp, just the background is blurred. This helps to isolate your subject. A blurry background can give your photographs a professional look. Take a look at these two photographs. Here's one without background blur, and here's one with it. Good bokeh isolates the subject and looks more professional. There are several ways to blur the background. Essentially, you're trying to obtain a shallow depth of field. I'm not gonna get into the technical aspects and nerd out. There are tons of videos on the internet for that. Instead, I'm going to show you how it's done. Everyone seems to think that a lens with a wide aperture or a low f-stop number is all you need, but that's just not the case. Here's a photograph shot at 24 millimeters with an f-stop of f2.8. And here is another photograph taken with a different lens at 24 millimeters at f2.8. Both shot at the same distance. The reason one has more background blur is because of the size of the entrance pupil on the lens. The entrance pupil is the opening in front of the lens. The diameter of f2.8 aperture is not the same size on every lens. A lot of people seem to be confused about that, so let me repeat that. The diameter or size of f2.8 or any f-stop is not the same on every lens. The bigger the entrance pupil, the bigger the aperture hole is. The wider the aperture is, the easier it is to blow out the background. Here you can see this 24mm has a small entrance pupil compared to the Sigma 18-35. This is why the Sigma at 24 mm at f2.8 was able to blur the background better. Every lens has its own bokeh characteristics. A lens with a fast aperture or a low f-stop number does not guarantee its bokeh ability. And it's not just about aperture either. A wide aperture helps but it's not the only way to get bokeh. The distance or how close you are to your subject has a significant influence on blurring the background too. You can take any lens, even your kit lens, and blur the background. Here, I'll show you. I'll take this Canon EFS 18-135mm kit lens, which has an aperture range of f3.5 to 5.6, and I'll blow out the background. As you can see, I was able to get a blurry background because I was so close to the subject. This was easy because our subject was small, but what if we had a larger subject? We'd have to step back from our subject to fit it in frame, 
losing our ability to blow out the background. Even if we had an aperture of f1.8, depending on how far we are from the subject and how far the subject is from the background, it would still be difficult to fully blow out the background. This is the limitation of cameras with smaller sensors. It's not that a full-frame camera can produce better bokeh with its larger sensor. It's that it lets you get closer to larger subjects, giving you more room to frame your subject, thus making it easier to blur out the background. I'm using a Canon 80D camera with a crop sensor, but if you used a Micro Four Thirds camera or a Compact with a one inch sensor or even your phone camera with a really tiny sensor, it's going to become harder and harder to get that background blurry with large subjects like people. Well, you might say, why not just get a wider lens? Which brings me to my next point. Focal length affects your ability to get bokeh too. The wider the lens, the less blur you can achieve. The longer the focal length, the more obvious the blur becomes. And this has to do with lens compression. Here, I'll frame two shots up, one with the Sigma 18-35mm lens at 35mm, and one with the EFS 55 to 250 at 250 millimeters. Look how the 250 millimeter magnifies the background, making it appear much closer than it is. If you get close enough and open the aperture up, you can really blur out the background and distort it with lens compression on a longer focal length. This is why most portrait photographers use 85mm lens for their work. Longer focal lengths make people look slim, while wider or shorter focal lengths distort in the other direction, making things look fatter. Well, that's the end of today's video. Hopefully now, when you're trying to get that creamy background bokeh blur, you'll know what to do and what type of lens to use to make it happen. If you have any questions about bokeh, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer you. You can also catch me on Instagram, here, okay? I tag all of my photos with the camera and the lens that I shot them with. If you like this video, consider smashing that like and subscribe button. Until next time, I am Todd Norris, peace out.